I had this conflict within me because I knew that my life wasn't where it should have been. It wasn't right. But I had this internal struggle going on, not knowing when it was going to happen. But then I believe God said, well, if you're not going to do it, then I'm going to do it for you. I was a gang member. I was a killer. I was a sociopath. I was sexually molested pretty much my whole life. I got a taste of this, this violence. It's scary, but it felt good. Talk about this shameful little secret. It was so traumatic. Satan stole my virginity. I was standing at the gates of hell. It's been an incredible journey. It's so emotional because it's just a transformed my life. Your suffering's come to an end. It was like a dark tunnel, but all of a sudden, at the end of that tunnel, I could see a little light. It just came pouring out of me. And then everything changed. My whole life is different. Forgiveness, hope, and ultimate redemption. God, the one you've been searching for, was real. You know, it's great that God is a, is a God who loves us no matter where we are. And sometimes people think, well, I can't really make my life right with God unless I'm in a church. Out here in nature, out here on this Western rodeo grounds, many young people gave their lives to Christ. People accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. And so it doesn't matter where you are, you don't necessarily have to be in a church. You could be anywhere. That's where God meets you. Robert, you're the executive producer and host for the national TV series, This Is Your Story, where we learn about people's lives have been totally transformed by Jesus Christ. Why is it important for you to tell your story on your show? Matthew, one of the key elements of my story was a transformation moment that I've always tied in to what Jesus said you must be born again. And I believe that pivotal moment in a person's life when they experience what it means to be born again, transformed by God's Spirit is so key because everything hinges on that. And so I've listened to numbers of stories, great stories, but I thought it was important to let people know that I have somewhat a similar story where just even as a young boy, I know that Jesus transformed my life and life has been different. And I really want people to experience that difference. Well, there's that term, born again, and we hear this term, born again Christian. What does that mean? Jesus' answer was very simple. He simply said, Nicodemus, you must be born again or born from above. And being born from above simply means that old part of you, that old sin nature, that bad part of you becomes reborn into a brand new person. It's like going from darkness to light. I'm a brand new person, a brand new creation, as Paul talks about, in Jesus Christ. Now in your show, you, we meet lots of people who have been born again. Have you had that experience in your life? If so, can you describe that to us? Our family, for a number of years, would take our family trailer and we would go to one of the Pentecostal camps called Lakeshore Pentecostal Camp or Coburg Camp. And I remember planning on going this particular summer. I'm 13 years of age. I'm not a believer. I'm not a follower of Christ. I, I know how to act as a Christian, but I know internally I'm not. And so I was looking forward to going, but the other aspect of it was, if you do go, you've got to sign up for all these particular things that the young people have to do. And I, I wasn't into that. And so we were able to sidestep that. So as a 13 year old boy, didn't get into trouble per se, but kind of was on the fringes. I mean, the other young people would have to go to Bible studies and this and that, and I never did except going to the evening services. So I remember that particular year, the camp speaker came in, and from the Monday night, he began this theme on the army of God. I remember, Matthew, I was sitting at the far back of the tabernacle in the left-hand side, and when he started to speak, I began to feel very uneasy. And as he began to preach, 
He began to state how that the previous night, which was a Thursday night, God gave him a dream. And the dream was this, that there were young people in the tabernacle, as we would call it, that were playing church. They knew the game, they knew how to act, they knew how to speak, but they really weren't born again. And when he said that, it hit me like a ton of bricks and I became a little nervous and afraid. When he got near the end where there was obviously gonna be an altar call, I can remember sitting on this wooden bench and all of a sudden I knew what was coming, but there was this uncontrollable, gentle shaking that began to happen in my body. I know what it is, it's the Holy Spirit convicting me, but I knew I had to respond to it and react to it. And it, it got more and more, in a sense, tangible. And I'm looking beside me and thinking, do the people sitting beside me know what's going on? Because man, I can feel it. And then all of a sudden my eyes started to well and water. And of course it comes to that point in the service where everybody stands up and the altar call comes. If you want to accept Jesus Christ, you need to come forward. So I knew that I had to go, but here's my pride, 13 years of age. Everybody knows that I'm, quote, a Christian. So if I start walking to the front, they're going to know I wasn't a Christian. I'm going to be embarrassed and so forth. So what I did was I asked a guy beside me whose name was Ron. I said, Ron, will you walk with me down to the front? Thinking that if they saw me and Ron, probably it's Ron, the one that's wanting to give his life to Christ, and I'm just walking with them. But as we stepped out and walked to where the altar call was given, it's like as I'm walking, I started to speed up. I mean, it just was almost uncontrollable, but I got to that altar, and it was like a long walk. I, I, I prayed the sinner's prayer that I knew I probably had prayed a hundred times before, but something happened. It's almost as if the light came on. And even though I wasn't involved in darkness, per se, as a 13-year-old, yet I can remember standing at that altar and knowing that I'm changed. I knew that that born-again experience that I heard preached so many times, that heard mom and dad talk about, actually took place within me. And when I turned around and I walked outside the tabernacle, it's like it was dark outside, but everything seemed so light. And Matthew, I'll never forget how I felt. I felt so clean, so pure. I felt so free. I felt as if I could fly like an angel, literally back to our family trailer. It was the most incredible experience. Even talking about it, I kind of feel the goosebumps because it was such a transformation internally that I knew that I knew that I was born again. Now this is at 13 years old, you had this dramatic experience. I mean, after that, what were the years like afterwards? And did you ever stray from that? It's like things switched for me. Before it was, I know I'm not a Christian, but I'm gonna pretend I am. Well, now it was, I know I'm a Christian, so do I pretend I'm not a Christian to my friends? Knew that I was supposed to read my Bible at that point, but didn't. You know, you go to church because mom and dad are heavily involved in the church. You know what to do, but I was almost like, I was sitting on the fence. And I knew there was gonna come a point in my life where I've gotta decide, am I gonna go off the fence or am I moving on with God? And then at one point, you gave your whole life to this mission. Yes, and that was a, a very interesting experience. I was about 15 or 16 years of age. I was playing in a Mississauga All-Star football game and I was a slot back. And I'll never forget it. We had talked previously about maybe coming out west to the province of Alberta. There was a Circle Square ranch out in Hellkirk, and they needed some help and counselors. And we had somewhat talked a bit about it, but left it there. Well, I'll never forget it. Football game's over. My friend comes running out in the field and saying, listen, I got us two tickets. We're going to Hellkirk tomorrow. And I was kind of flabbergasted, but I thought, okay, we're doing it. It's happening. So. Away we go, get in a plane. And so we got to Hellkirk, Alberta. Now I knew that I wasn't where I should be in serving the Lord. And I knew that there were gonna be kids coming and I was gonna be responsible for them spiritually. I was in no place for that. Friday comes and about Friday, four o'clock, everyone's getting ready to go on this camp out. All of a sudden I become deathly ill. It just happened. I'm lying here on the bunk bed and I'm deathly ill. And I remember once getting up 
and somewhere between here and the washroom I had fainted. And I don't remember what happened or how long I had fainted, but I got up, didn't even get to the washroom, came back and lied down. And that's when I recognized that if I was going to be the counselor that I needed to be for the kids for that whole summer, that I needed to make sure that my life was right with God. And I knew it wasn't. And looking back, I happened to believe that that was God keeping me back, getting me alone, and making me realize that if I didn't recommit my life to Christ, my life would be ineffective. And I remember lying there on the bunk, and I just looked up at the uh, ceiling, and I simply said, God, please, I understand what's going on with my life, and I'm 16 years of age, and I need to get my life ready or right with you, and so please forgive me. I want to serve you. I want to make you Lord of my life in every capacity, in every way. And I remember as I prayed that prayer simply, I, I think it was my right hand just kind of came over my chest and I went to sleep. And I got up the next morning and it was before breakfast time because I heard a bell and I felt so, in, it's like nothing ever happened. I would, didn't feel ill, didn't feel sick. It was like I was absolutely fine. I got up, had breakfast, the group came back and uh, the next day, that's when kids came, and I saw for those six weeks God do some incredible things. And I, and I say this humbly through my life in helping to reach kids with the gospel who didn't know Jesus, who came from all kinds of backgrounds, and to see their lives transformed was amazing. But I think this moment here in this, on this bunk bed was a turning point in my life, getting myself right so that I could serve God, and from then, life in serving him from this camp forward into full-time vocational ministry um, became very effective and fruitful for the kingdom. And it was such an experience that of course when I came back from that camp, I mean it was all gung-ho, on fire for God in the way we went. And so you had these major transformative experiences in your youth. You actually dedicated your entire life to this in your career. Why? I love speaking. I love communicating biblical truth and talking to the young people about issues and bringing the Bible and God into it. I, I, I just loved it. And I, I began to, at that point, think, what am I going to do with my life? Like, what's my career going to be? I mean, my dad wanted me to go one way, but my youth pastor saw something. His name was Pastor Paul. He saw something in me, and he didn't say anything immediately, but he began to recognize, as we call it, Matthew, the call of God on someone's life. And he asked me to speak more times. And as I did that, all of a sudden something strange started to happen. I, I had this incredible, intense hunger for knowing more about God and His Word. And so evenings when some of my buddies are out playing hockey or doing whatever, I'm at home in my room, Bible open, tapes playing, and I'm studying the book of Revelation and Daniel. I mean, it's absurd, but I had such an incredible hunger and intense desire to know more about God. I, I would pray for an hour almost every day, but these things are happening. And then in church when I was serving, the strangest thing would happen when the preacher would get up to preach, I just started to kind of shake a bit. And there was this conviction, not of anything wrong, but I began to sense that I'm supposed to be doing what he's doing. And of course, I'm telling nobody this, and I'm not having any conversation even with my youth pastor, but I'm thinking, I need to be doing that. I need to be up there preaching or teaching. And so that happened numerous times. And then I finally, in talking with my youth pastor, realized that God was calling me to be a preacher, to be a pastor, to be a minister. And I thought, well, if he's calling me to do this, he's got to do something unique. And he did a couple of things very unique, but one of the catchers was, I said, I'm just gonna to apply to Bible college. And if I don't get it, then I know God hasn't called me. But if I do, and I'm waiting till the last minute, I know I am. And so I applied to Eastern Pentecostal Bible College, called at that time today, it's Master's College and Seminary. And within a month, I got a reply, I got accepted. So I knew that God was calling me into full-time vocational ministry. Let's talk about Rob. Uh, how, how is it that um, uh, you're in this space now? I mean, you pastored for 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, why aren't you still pastoring? 
Well, it, life has its bumps, has its bruises, and I was, um, after I pastored for 20 years, I began to realize that in some places, for me personally, God moves me in a crisis situation for whatever reason. And the church that I was pastoring with, I was an associate pastor, the pastor had resigned, and when that happens, um, everybody goes. Right. And that took place, and um, I happened to get a call from a good friend of mine that uh, introduced me to Huntley Street and Crossroads, Reynolds, Maine, a good buddy. And the journey on what I was beginning to do now started about four years ago. It started with him in missions, then I was introduced to the workplace ministry, and that's how the progression happened. I had no desire, no passion, or even insight that I'd ever do TV. But that's kind of how it unfolded on the journey at that point. And so you've ministered and you've pastored, and now you're taking it to television and the internet to reach people all over the world. Why is it so important to get the message of Jesus Christ's gospel to people? With our culture today, you can be, quote, a good, moral, right living person. But biblically speaking, that doesn't mean that you're going to spend an eternity with Jesus in heaven. Again, Jesus said you must be born again. And so over the last couple of years, the message of getting that gospel out, which is the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried, rose again the third day, paying the penalty for our sin, but also breaking the power of sin in one's life, transforming a person from darkness to light is so incredibly important that it almost moves me, compels me. And being able to use television and media and social media to take that story and listen to people's stories of how that happened in their lives, for me, it's the most incredible thing. And if we can reach just even one person, that's enough. But I believe the gospel message today is more important now than it ever has been in the history of the world. Now you obviously seen and, and witnessed and, and have had people on your show who've had incredibly great transformative stories into light. What about people who've gone into the darkness? Have you seen that or experienced that? I have had various encounters with um, the demonic world, the evil supernatural. And I remember a couple of times, but one specific time that for whatever reason has always stuck with me that um, there was a point when I was pastoring a church and this lady came in for counseling. And I recognized right away when she sat down that this lady had, was obviously demon possessed as we used to call it back then. The correct term is demonized. But I could see that that was actually something that she was really struggling with and was in bondage. And so I quickly ended the meeting, but I invited her back. And so we set the meeting up, this woman comes in and I remember just sitting down somewhat like this, just across from her, and I said to her, Let, let's pray and let's just believe that God's going to set you free. Because she was really troubled in her mind, thoughts, suicidal, etc. And let's, I said, let's begin to pray. So I began to pray, and all of a sudden I could sense her tensing up. And I looked up from praying, and I saw in her eyes this horrible blackness, and then she began to speak in this other voice, profanities and anything you could you know, possibly think of. And so... Immediately, I, I kind of rose up thinking, I mean, I'm going to take authority over this in Jesus' name. And I stood up and I backed up a bit. And we prayed and God set her free. But what was unique to me was she said that when I stood up and backed up, she said, behind you, there were these two seven, eight foot angels with swords drawn and they were like warrior angels to protect you. So whatever I was thinking I was going to do, wasn't going to happen because God's supernatural overpowered that of evil. Now you've seen it supernatural experiences like this and what you're describing in one issue that you really take issue with with people is they've lost sense of the born again experience. Do you think the idea both good and bad of supernatural is being lost today? Yes, I think it's a topic that we um, don't speak a lot about. I mean, I remember growing up, a lot of what was spoken, preached, taught on TV, etc., had to deal with the two because basically the gospel is to set people free. And yet, I think our culture has shifted whereby you find it very rare that you hear about the evil, the dark, 
the bondages versus how the gospel could change lives. Ministers that have large followings today are beginning to revert back to that simple gospel message in setting people free and seeing their lives transformed to become born again, because then you can then build good disciples and followers of Christ. But if you miss that key point, you've got people playing church. I do believe there are a lot of people in the church that when you talk about walking the line, it's like Jesus said, you're either hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, I'm gonna spew you out of my mouth. I believe a lot of church people are lukewarm, but don't realize it. And I don't think they realize the significance of the gospel message in what it means to be truly born again. You can have a mental ascent, of the Lord, you can understand all the Bible stories, you can be brought up in the church, but unless you make that personal decision, everything else means nothing. What's next for you? What are you gonna to do to get this message to the world? Well, here's what I believe, Matthew. I, I believe that for this is your story, God's got a great plan. And of course, he's brought together some incredible people. I mean, you are our executive producer. And we just need to simply sit back and say, okay, Lord, we've got the tools, we've got the people. Now we just need you to open doors. And I'm really trusting that through TV, that this is your story is going to impact lives, but there's also the world of social media. And God will give us the wisdom and the knowing and the knowledge to be able to put together what needs to be done and packaged to get it out in social media so that people begin to hear about lives being transformed and that their ears would be pricked and they would think, how can my life be changed like that? And then we can simply share the gospel. So if we can do it through TV, social media, all the platforms to get this message out, then if Jesus then comes, I'm satisfied. Now you obviously believe in the power of someone's testimony of Jesus Christ in their life. So much so you're sharing your own story on your own show. If someone watching this right now wants to tell their story, wants to, to lift up how Jesus Christ changed their life, how do they get a hold of you? They could simply go to our website, thisisyourstory.ca. You can see some of the stories that we've already posted. Matthew, your story is there. There's a section on the website where you can click on the link and it'll allow you to either get in touch with us about your story or if you know they know somebody that has a great story, they can also submit their name within the information and we will simply follow up with them, connect with them, and if they've got a story to tell for This Is Your Story, the program, and it all works and comes together, we would love to air it. Well, Robert, thank you very much for sharing your story on This Is Your Story. Thank you, Matthew. If you want to learn more about the gospel of Jesus Christ and how it can transform your life, you can request a free Bible by calling toll-free 1-888-482-4253 or visit www.gideons.ca forward slash request. You can begin your journey with Christ now.